by reference to the percipient occasion M. For example, there are the actual occasions of the settled world which provide the datum for M. These lie in M's causal past. Again, there are the potential occasions for which M decides its own potentialities of contribution to their data, these lie in M's causal future. There are also those actual occasions which lie neither in M's causal past, nor in M's causal future. Such actual occasions are called M's contemporaries. These P89 free loci are defined solely by reference to the pure mode of causal efficacy. We now turn to the pure mode of presentational immediacy. One great difference from the previous way of obtaining loci at once comes into view. In considering the causal mode, the past and the future were death. 124. Discussions and applications. Find positively, and the contemporaries of M were defined negatively as lying neither in M's past nor in M's future. In dealing with presentational immediacy the opposite way must be taken. For presentational immediacy gives positive information only about the immediate present as defined by itself. Presentational immediacy illustrates, by means of sensa, potential subdivisions within a cross-section of the world, which is in this way objectified for M. This cross-section is M's immediate present. What is in this way illustrated is the potentiality for subdivision into actual atomic occasions. We can also recognize potentialities for subdivision of regions whose subdivisions remain unillustrated by any contrast of sensa. There are well-known limitations to such direct perceptions of unillustrated potentiality, a perception outrunning the real illustration of division by con. Contrasted sensa. Such limitations constitute the minima sensibilia. Hume's polemic respecting causation constitutes a proof that M's immediate present lies within the locus of M's contemporaries. The presentation to M of this locus, forming its immediate present, contributes to M's datum two facts about the universe. One fact is that there is a unison of becoming, constituting a positive relation of all the occasions in this community to any one of them. The members of this community share in a common immediacy, they are in unison, as to their becoming, that is, to say, any pair of occasions in the locus are contemporaries. The other fact is the subjective illustration of the potential extensive subdivision with complete vagueness respecting the actual atomization. For example, the stone, which in the immediate 190 present is a group of many actual occasions, is illustrated as one gray spatial region. But, to go back to the former fact, the many actual entities of the present stone and the percipient are connected together in the unison of immediate becoming. This community of concrescent occasions, forming M's immediate present, thus establishes a principle of common relatedness, a principle realized as an element in M's datum. This is the principle of mutual relatedness in the unison of becoming.
thus find that the locus namely, M's immediate present is determined by the condition of mutual unison, independently of variations of relevant importance in M's illustrative sensa, and extends to their utmost bounds of faintness, and is equally determinate beyond such bounds. We thus gain the conception of a locus in which any two atomic actualities are in concrescent unison, and which is particularized by the fact that M belongs to it, and so do all actual occasions belonging to extensive regions which lie in M's immediate present is illustrated by importantly relevant sensa. This complete region is the prolongation of M's immediate present, organisms and environment. 125 beyond M's direct perception, the prolongation being effected by the principle of concrescent unison. A complete region, satisfying the principle of concrescent unison, will be called a duration. A duration is a cross section of the universe. It is the immediate present condition of the world at some epoch, according to the old, classical, theory of time a theory never doubted until within the last few years. It will have been seen that the philosophy of organism accepts and defines this 191 notion. Some measure of acceptance is imposed upon them.
natural knowledge, ch. 11, and my concept of nature, ch. Versus, 126, discussions and applications. Any member of such a duration is contemporary with them, and hence that such durations are all included in the I. The characteristic property of a duration is termed tunison of becoming, he ends presented locus, which is the contemporary nexus perceived as a mode of presentational immediacy, its regions defined by sensa. It is a on the basis of direct intuition, that ends presented locus is closely related to some one duration including M. It is also assumed, as the outcome of modern physical theory, that there is more than one duration including M. The single duration which is so related to M's presented locus is termed TM's presented duration. So this connection is criticized in the following sections of this chapter. In part 4, the connection of these T presented, loci the regions defined by straight lines is
the body to presented locus is definable. This is not a mere logical question. The problem is to point out that element in the nature of things constituting such a geometrical relevance of the body to the presented locus. If there be such an element, we can understand that a certain state of the body may lift it into an important factor of our experience. The only possible elements capable of this extended systematic relevance beyond the body are straight lines and planes. Planes are definable in terms of straight lines, so that we can concentrate attention upon straight lines. It is a dogma of science that straight lines are not definable in terms of mere notions of extension. THS, in the expositions of recent physical theory, straight lines are defined in terms of the actual physical happenings. The disadvantage of this doctrine is that there is no method of characterizing the possibilities of physical events antecedently to their actual occurrence. It is easy to verify that in fact there is a tacit relevance to an underlying system, by reference to which the physical loci including those called, straight lines, are defined. The question is how to define this underlying system in terms of, here, straight lines, determinable without rest. Errands to the casual details of the happenings. It will be shown later, CF, Part 4, CHs, 3 and IV, that this dogma of the indefinability of straight lines is mistaken. Thus the systematic relation of the body to the presented locus occasions no theoretical difficulty. All measurement is effected by observations of sensa 195 with geometrical relations within this presented locus. Also all scientific observation of the unchanged character of things ultimately depends upon the maintenance of directly observed geometrical analogies within such loci. However far the testing of instruments is carried, Finally all scientific interpretation is based upon the assumption of directly observed unchangeability of some instrument for seconds, for hours, for months, for years. When we test this assumption we can only use another instrument, and there it cannot be an infinite regress of instruments. Thus ultimately all science depends upon direct observation of homo. 128. Discussions and Applications OGY of status within a system. Also the observed system is the complex of geometrical relations within some presented locus. In the second place, a locus of entities in, unison of becoming, obviously depends on the particular actual entity. The question, as to how the extensive continuum is in fact atomized by the atomic actuality, is relevant to the determination of the locus. The factor of temporal endurance selected for any one actuality will depend upon its initial, subjective aim. The categorical conditions which govern the, subjective aim, are discussed later in Part 3. They consist generally in satisfying some condition of a maximum, to be obtained by the transmission of inherited types of order. This is the foundation of the stationary conditions in terms of which the ultimate formulations of physical science can be mathematically expressed. Thus the loci of unison of becoming, are only determinable in terms of the actual happenings of the world. But the conditions which they satisfy are expressed in terms of measurements derived from the qualification of actualities by the systematic character of the extensive continuum. The term, duration, will be used for a locus
focus of unison of becoming and the terms presented locus and strain 196 locus for the systematic locus involved in presentational immediacy point seven the strain loci provide the systematic geometry with its homology of relations throughout all its regions the durations share in the deficiency of homology characteristic of the physical field which arises from the peculiarities of the actual events. Section X We can now sum up this discussion of organisms, order, societies, T nexus. The aim of the philosophy of organism is to express a coherent cosmology based upon the notions of system, process, creative advance into novelty, res vera, in Descartes' sense stubborn fact, individual unity of experience, feeling, time is perpetual perishing, endurance of recreation, purpose, universals as forms of definiteness, particulars i.e., res beret as ultimate agents of stubborn fact. Every one of these notions is explicitly formulated either by Descartes or by Locke. Also no one can be dropped without doing violence to common sense. But neither Descartes nor Locke weaves these notions into one coherent system of cosmology. In so far as either philosopher is systematic, he relies on alternative notions which in the end lead to Hume's extreme of sensationalism. In the philosophy of organism it is held that the notion of organism has two meanings, interconnected but intellectually separable, namely, the microscopic meaning and the macroscopic meaning. The microscopic. Seven in the concept of nature these two loci were not discriminated, namely, durations and strain loci. Organisms and environment. 129. Meaning is concerned with the formal constitution of an actual occasion, considered as a process of realizing an individual unity of experience. The macroscopic meaning is concerned with the givenness of the actual were 1D, considered as the stubborn fact which at once limits and provides 197 opportunity for the actual occasion. The canalization of the creative urge, exemplified in its massive reproduction of social NEXLLS, is for common sense the final illustration of the power of stubborn fact. Also in our experience, we essentially arise out of our bodies which are the stubborn facts of the immediate relevant past. We are also carried on by our I am. Immediate past of personal experience to finish a sentence with the way of begun end. The sentence may embody a new thought, never phrased before, or an old one rephrased with verbal novelty. versus Locke and Hume. Section I. 198 J. A. More detailed discussion of Descartes, Locke, and Hume in this and in the succeeding chapter may make plain how deeply the philosophy of organism is founded on 17th century thought and how at certain critical points it diverges from that thought.
We shall understand better the discussion, if we start with some analyse tilde of the presuppositions upon which Hume's philosophy rests. These presuppositions were not original to Hume, nor have they ceased with him. They were largely accepted by Kant and are widely prevalent in modern philosophy. The philosophy of organism can be best understood by conceiving it as accepting large portions of the expositions of Hume and Kant, with the exception of these presuppositions, and of inferences directly derived from them. Hume is a writer of unrivaled clearness, and, as far as possible, it will be well to allow him to express his ideas in his own words. He writes, We may observe, that it is universally allowed by philosophers, and is besides pretty obvious of itself, that nothing is ever really present with the mind but its perceptions or impressions and ideas, and that external objects become known to us only by those perceptions they occasion. from simple impressions, which are correspondent to them. 